welcome to our review on six mark questions for the higher tier. So I've got one here that's come from a P3 higher tier exam paper which involves calculations in your answer. So the question we've got is airbags are useful if a car is involved in a crash. Table shows some information about a crash test carried out by a car manufacturer. So in our table we've got the initial speed of the driver in meters per second, the mass of the driver in kilograms and the time taken to stop. So what we actually have there are obviously the two different rows without airbags and with airbags. So use the information in the table to describe and explain how airbags help to protect the driver in a crash and it tells us to use relevant calculations in our answer. So the first thing to note is we need to use calculations. If you want to access the top marks where it tells you to use a calculation, you have to do it. If you don't use calculations where it has that phrase use relevant calculations in your answer, you're never going to get the top marks. You might still get the level 2s or the level 1s, but you certainly will never access the level 3s. So the first thing to do is to actually carry out your calculations. So on here we've got the initial speed of the driver, we've got the mass of the driver and the time taken to stop. Now because we're talking about airbags, hopefully we remember that anything to do with collisions should involve momentum. So if you turn back to page 2 on your exam paper then what you're actually going to find are the calculations you need. And to work out the force that acts on the driver then it's the change in momentum divided by time and to work out momentum it's mass times velocity. So we're going to actually work out the force acting on the drivers. So to do that, it's going to be the mass times by the velocity. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be 15 times 50. And then divide that by the time. So without airbags, first of all, is going to be 15 times by 50. And then divide that answer by 0.02. So plug that into your calculator and then that's going to give you an answer of 37,500 newtons. Do the same for with airbags. Now the top part's the same, 15 times 50. The only thing that's different is the time, which is 0.05. And that's going to give us a force of 15,000 newtons. So we've carried out the calculations first of all. And then what we need to do is describe and explain how the airbags help protect the driver. So we talk about what these calculations show. So airbags then protect the driver by increasing the time it takes to come to a stop. Now, we relate this to the calculations. So, the calculations show the change in momentum is the same, but airbags make it happen over a longer time. And then you've just got to say what that actually means. So this means the force acting on the driver is lower, which reduces the chance of injury on the driver. in a crash. So what we've got there then is the complete answer. So if we have a look and see how this would be marked then, for a level one answer, so as for one to two marks, you'd make any two points from what they call sections A and B on the mark scheme. So section A is kind of looking at those basic ideas about what airbags do. So you could talk about airbags changing shape, absorbing energy, reducing injuries, things like this. And the section B is using the actual table data in its raw form. So if from the table we were to be sort of saying 
the, the collision takes longer with an airbag, then that's looking at your kind of level one answers there. For the level two answer, you'd make three points, which must be drawn from both sections A and B. Okay, so we'd be combining to an extra point there between them. And then for our level three answer, which is the one that we're really concerned about, you'd have calculated the rate of momentum change or the force. So that's what we did up here. We've calculated the force for both. And we've also commented about it. So this is literally your level three answer. Now, the one thing to bear in mind is when we come to mark these, then we don't start at the bottom. You don't have to have done all the little bits beneath it to access those higher marks. The way that all these six mark questions are marked is you start with the level three answers on the mark scheme. If they don't meet that, you work your way down from there. So because the level three answer says you calculated the force for both with and without an airbag and commented on it, then that gets you your level three answer, which is gonna be six marks. If, however, you didn't do that, you go down to the level two, and if you had three points from the different sections on the mark scheme, you get the three or four marks, depending on obviously how well you've written it. So that's literally how these are marked. So don't worry about having to fill in absolutely every idea you've got. And the only other thing I will say is, where obviously you can see I've gone beneath the line here, if you ever go beyond the little dotted lines on your exam paper, then if it's obviously halfway through a sentence, it's quite obvious and the examiner will know. If you finished a sentence there and you started writing a bit further down here, put an asterisk or an arrow or something to show that it continues elsewhere, because that's gonna help them to identify that there's further writing, which will be in a section that's off their marking screen normally. So make sure that any time that you are actually writing in addition to the marking space, it's very clearly marked that it goes somewhere else.